Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. A number of biomarkers are actually used in neuroendocrine tumors. Two that are probably best validated in prospective clinical trials is chromogranin A and neuron-specific enolase. Both of these biomarkers have been associated with shorter progression-free survival as well as shorter overall survival. For chromogranin A, elevation uh, is associated with a poor outcome. Similar, NSC is above the upper limit normal in clinical trials has been associated with both shorter progression-free survival as well as overall survival. In terms of the molecular biology of these tumors, actually, uh, you know, recent study have completed some sequencing in this area. And what we see in pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors is the most common mutation being MEM1 gene, roughly about 40%. About 40% of these patients will also have either mutations in DAX or ATRX. These two genes are probably associated with alternative lensing of telomeres and it may be related to how these tumors are able to essentially escape unchecked uh, proliferation and replication. In addition, about 15% of these patients also have mutations in the mTOR pathway. These are associated with poor prognosis. However, there are actually at this point none, uh, none uh, biomarkers, none of these biomarkers are really predictive of response to or outcome. Pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors can come in uh, two different flavors, if you will. Uh, there are some tumors that secrete hormones, and those hormones can result in a variety of different syndromes. We've known for a long time that um, treating pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors with somatostatin analogs uh, can decrease hormone secretion and really dramatically improve, in some cases, some of the symptoms that patients are experiencing. Uh, so if patients have those types of symptoms, uh, there's almost no question that one would start a somatostatin analog. Uh, more recently, we've learned that somatostatin analogs can also help slow down tumor growth. Uh, so that's another reason that they are now used. Uh, so if one is concerned about uh, tumors in a patient who has metastatic disease and wants to slow down the growth of that tumor, that's another reason to start treatment now with a somatostatin analog. Tumor differentiation is one of the most important prognostic factor in any neuroendocrine tumor type, including pancreatic NATS. Uh, the prognosis varies vastly when we're talking about a poorly differentiated tumor where median survival is in the one to two range versus well differentiated when it often exceeds 10 years. Differentiation specifically refers to the extent to which the tumor cells resemble the endocrine cells of origin. So well differentiated tumors tend to be composed of uniform, monomorphic, round cells, often arranged in islet or trabeculae, poorly differentiated, have much larger areas of necrosis, pleomorphism, they're just aggressive looking tumors under the microscope. So differentiation is a huge prognostic factor and should be reported for every neuroendocrine tumor patient. Grade refers to the proliferative activity of the tumor. The higher it is, the higher the grade is. And that can be measured either through the mitotic rate, in other words, the number of dividing cells, or the KI-67 proliferative index, which is another way of looking at uh, the um, mitotic activity of the tumor. The WHO classification considers poorly differentiated to be equivalent to high grade, and high grade being defined as mitotic rate greater than 20 or KI-67 index greater than 20, although there are exceptions to that. There are tumors that are relatively well differentiated but happen to have a high proliferative activity, especially as measured by the KI-67 index. Those kind of straddle the intermediate to high grade um, classification. Uh, low grade refers to a very low mitotic rate, zero to one, and intermediate grade refers to a mitotic rate of two to 20. Patients with uh, early stage tumors um, that can be resected are usually cured of their disease. Patients with metastatic disease, most commonly to the liver, uh, tend to have a poor prognosis, although it is important to remember that even metastatic cases uh, can live uh, for years, often many years, especially if the histological grade is low. So when we see a patient with a metastatic pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor, 
if the tumor burden is not very high, if the grade is low, uh, treatment can often extend survival for many years. Age is an important prognostic factor in neuroendocrine tumors, more so perhaps in most cancers, uh, because in some cases, um, patients will die of comorbidities rather than the actual cancer. And so age comes into play um, when it comes to prognosis in a very significant way.